Good afternoon and welcome to the instructional video for this Swift Valero 714. So moving around the vehicle, it is based on the Fiat engine on a 150 brake horse with the alloy wheels, folding mirrors which are electrically operated from inside. We have the large windows, tinted windows on the outside. A storage locker on the outside, so you've got one key that is going to open all the external lockers and these just push in to open. We've got a couple of different shelf levels, storage areas just there. Underneath that you'll have a signal for the wastewater drain. So this basically is a two-part system. Basically you have your grey tap, that is where you will twist to empty it. And above it you've got a little bar which we have a tool fitted on the other side which will show you that just twists it up so it is out of the place and doesn't catch it on anything when lower down. So you have it down like that when you want to drain it and lift it up to just have it in the drivable position. Behind that we have your mains inlet point and there is an aerial connection point should you want to connect up to a sight aerial as well also in there. Further back we have the vent for the Alder heating. There is nothing that you need to remove on this but just make sure that you're careful around it when the heating system's on it does get quite warm behind that then we have the toilet cassette area so pretty standard toilet cassette you'll just need to lift up the handle slide it out release the grey cap here and press down the orange button at the top that releases the vacuum that's in there slide it back in when you're finished up with your handle and lock it just in place now you also have a little bit of storage in here either side and make sure that your blade valve inside which I'll come to when we go inside is in the closed position to allow you to pull that toilet out. If you're forcing it out something's not right just go inside and check the position of it. Through the back of the vehicle we have a three bike rack and this is a winding bike rack so you have a separate little winding handle such as you have on your actual awning itself which goes into there so that once you pull the lever down and then wind it down, it will bring the position of this further down to help easily load the bikes on there. Once you're done, then you can wind them up out of the way and just use it like a normal bike rack. We have also got a twin camera system at the top. So this will show you both as a driving angle and as a reversing aid. Round to the passenger side, so we've got the rear locker area, again accessible by unlocking it and then pressing the buttons either side in, that will then drop it down and give you access into the under storage area where at the minute your carpets are, you've got a couple of additional bike rack arms, all your awning poles are also located in there. Underneath is where the fresh water tank drains and very similar to what I showed you before. So you'll use the bar that's supplied it with it to turn the pipe down and empty the fresh water. So it's just a twist to, to turn it there. When it's full and you're driving away, you twist it back up and remove that from the same fitting as your wastewater and that allows you to drive away nice and easily. Also, we have a Druma barbecue point and the little isolator to turn on and off the gas is just located there. Further forward we have a 12 volt point for plugging in a water carrier so you don't have to go to the main site to fill up with water and then a separate water tank to fill up the fresh water. So you'll need to make sure that that valve on your water is shut and then you can fill up your fresh water just there. Once it's full it will simply just overflow from the vehicle. We've got your fridge vents, which are just located there. You can buy additional winter covers if you want to use it all year round. And we have got your awning light just above it, which turns on from the control panel inside. Your habitation door, and then the Thule horn awning. Now we've done separate video for the Thule awning, so I'll send you a separate link of how to use this, and that will make it easy to understand. And below that, finally on the outside, we have your gas bottle area. It will take two gas bottles, and you have a mounted regulator just there. So that's the outside of the motorhome. 
on the cab side there's two items we have our diesel clearly marked just located just there and then inside we have the bonnet release catch which when just pulled will open up the access to the bonnet area whilst we're here under this panel is where your engine battery is located and under this seat so the passenger seat is where the tool kit is The van is also fitted at the front with Remy's cab lines on both side windows and by pinching the buttons together it's also fitted on the front cab window. So gently put them back in and they will go into place nice and easily there. To lift up the bonnet you'll want to go directly above the swift sign and you will see that there is a little yellow lever. Lift that up you've got your Bonnet stay there, your oil and your dipstick, your screen wash and your varying level tanks. The negative point is just this terminal here and the positive point can be found underneath there if you wish to. To close it, just release it down nice and easily and that will close. So that's the outside of the Bolero completed let's go on inside and have a look round in here on the habitation door on the inside we have a bin we have a blind and we also have a fly screen fitted so once inside we can lock the door by pressing the little button to the side there one will release it and then again, one to lock it. Above is where your main control panel can be found. So if we want to put power on, we'll press the power and it will light up the main control panel here. So we have several light options to the left, turning on your lights within the vehicle. We have the pump option. So as soon as you press that on, it will tell you that your pump is running and it will build it up to pressure. We then have a navigation option, which will then take you through the list of options, system settings, heater settings, dimmer levels, internal temperatures, AC limits, tank heaters, battery selections, solar panel, vehicle battery level, leisure battery charging, and back again to your main charging system. So this is your main control panel, yeah? Where you will turn on and off the lights and do everything that you need to do from there so pretty straightforward and it navigates it through your main bits are your lights and your pump and the rest of the options are navigated through the little arrows at the side but whenever you press it it will change and move it along now one thing with the sergeant systems if they're not used for a period of time you will need to reboot the actual system and i'll show you where that you do that now so that can be found underneath the forward facing seat and this is where the sergeant box is so we've got all the fuses which are just there we have the main rcd box i open that up for you the little yellow button is the test button and if you want to know if you've got mains power coming into the vehicle then press the yellow button and that will flip down that little blue button at the side and will tell you that you've got power coming in if you press that button and nothing happens then you've no power coming into the vehicle guys so you do need to check your supply to the vehicle. Above it, we have a button for a reverse polarity. We have a selection for your charger. So if this is not pressed on and lit, then the vehicle will not be getting charged from the outside. Yeah, so you'll see the light goes off and then goes back on. Same with the heating and the hot water. You'll need to make sure that that is illuminated and not pressed out so that you can then utilize these facilities in the vehicle. To the left hand side of it, you have got a system shutdown. So if you want to turn all the power off to all the vehicle, then you'll need to do that. Press the button in and it will turn everything off. You can also utilize this as a reset button. So if you're not getting any lights on the control panel, press this in, press it back in again, and then try the system. It sometimes just reboots itself by doing that. Okay, do So we can see the forward facing seats. And we can see that we can lift that out to make a bed, which I'll come on to later in the video. So for the time being, we'll just pop that back in place and move back to your control panels. 
So once the main control panel's done, what I would suggest is you put the pump on, you come to the taps, and they're all designed on the top, but to be easy identified. I would flick then the tap through to the hot symbol and pull the water through the boiler. Now you'll need to do that on this tap here. And if we just come through, do it also on the taps in the bathroom area and on the shower area. So pull them out to hot and then put that pump on. What we'll need to do then is come to the boiler, which now I've lifted it up, is located underneath the driver's side bed. And you will need to make sure that this little yellow toggles valve is either facing that way or that way and not in the vertical position and that will allow the water to fill up this boiler yeah otherwise you'll run the water straight through the fresh water tank straight through here and then out of your drain valve there now should you be draining it it'll be up and it will leak straight out through the vehicle and empty all your fresh water tank so just make sure that that is down doesn't matter whether it's pointing towards the passenger side of the or the driver's side it's just got to be down for that boiler once that boiler is full of water and all the air is out of it your pump will sit down as it'll have built up pressure and you can go to your heater controls which we'll move on to next so the heater controls for your hot water and your heating is on this little panel to the left hand side of your main control so you can also see on here that we have a little symbol to tell us that we're hooked up to mains. We want to then press the button on here. And what you will see, if I revert it back to, is a blue screen. So the top one being what we want it to be heated to within the vehicle. And it's this touch screen. So just touch it to change the temperature down. And then up. And then that will work to the temperature that you set it to once you select the fuel source. The next option down is the water. So when it goes green, it will then start up the heating, the hot water. Please make sure you don't select this option if you've no hot water or water in the boiler at all. So make sure that there's water in the boiler if you want to do the water heating. The next option down then is the fuel source that we're going to try and select. So one kilowatt electric, 2 kilowatt electric and 3 kilowatt. So choose the desired setting and it will tell you what you've chosen there. You can also then select gas if you're wild camping or you can do a mixture of gas and electric if you've got both options fitted to the vehicle. That is the simplest way of explaining this heating to you. You can then go into your settings and change through some more programming settings, timer settings, day night settings, etc, etc. But get the fundamentals of these four options right before you start doing that. When you want to turn the unit off, just press the button and the system will go blank and it will turn everything off. So they your main options for your control, for your heating. Let's go around the rest of the vehicle. So throughout the vehicle, you'll find there's a series of light switches that will turn off different lights through the vehicle. Some of them are these little spotlights and so not as easy there's some of the main lights that you'll see on the top but there'll be several controls for several areas around the vehicle these little stop lights just turn off with the little switches there the, the windows all have fly screens and blinds to release it just pull the clip back down and lift the unit up to separate it through on opening the windows we'll just want to make sure that we press in the buttons so just press twist press twist and then gently up and it will hold it open at the desired angle all the way up to come all the way back down so just be careful if you are parking it next to a wall because you do need to go all the way up to come all the way back down they're exactly the same on all the windows around the vehicle we have the little spotlight reading which turn on and off just by clicking the buttons we have some little pockets at the see the side at the top for storage we have a fly screen and a blind on the big picture window. This is also an opening window and you'll need to release both of these handles and then turn the handle up to open that front window. Yeah, Just make sure that before you do that, 
you do or you drive off you do put them in the full locking position so that that roof light doesn't open when you're driving along cupboard spacers in the front so to open it you press the button in and that releases the, the actual catch to open it up and then on closing it you'll hear a little click same on this side just here we have your information pack that's got everything in regarding the fitment your table hooks on to the little bar there so you can remove it and that stores away in the bathroom area should you wish to find where that's located kitchen area we've got good storage throughout your drainer uh he's just in there and your drawer that slides out for your utensils is just there we've got a couple of additional sockets and your chopping board drain cover just there light switch turns off just above there and then above in the storage area we've got plate and cup holders just there microwave which is only mains operated so please don't try and do this if we're not hooked up to mains and on the cooking facility lifting up the lid we have got both gas and electric on that side of it so electric there and your three gas just there pretty self-explanatory you've got a nice symbol on this side telling you electric the rest of the options are in the position which you're choosing we have got a grill option which is just this one here and then an oven option which is the final one just there so pretty straight straightforward might be similar to what we have at home underneath we have another storage area and the plug for the uh, electric socket behind that we have the fridge and the freezer compartment and this is the Dometic automatic seeking one so to turn the unit on press and hold the button we then can manually select it if we want to do in either gas the battery option which only works when the engine's running so please don't try and do this at any other time because it will not work we then have manually selecting electric or if we want to do we're plugged into mains now so when i press the a button you'll see it switched over to electric and it should source the strongest source so when you're plugged into mains it will be electric obviously when you're not it'll be gas and when the engine's running it will be the engine you have then a blower that blows heat around and then we have an option for the temperature from the cold, uh, warmest at the bottom to the coldest we also have a reset for the gas so if it tries to find gas and it, and it locks out we have a little sticker just reminding you just there you will need to pre press that button to reset the system okay when you turn it off press and hold the button the lights will go off and the lights will go off just there we do have little travel catchers so if you're not using it in the winter then you can just slide it out and it will stop it from uh, molding up otherwise you'll just use it just as you see there and press it to close it above that we've got a storage area where we've got a tv bracket that's been mounted your mains 12 volt and aerial sockets smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector just there as well into the rear area we've got again the same window systems a storage area hanging rail there and we've got the solar panel regulator which is just fitted up in that corner nothing you really need to do with this guys we've got a couple of light switches which can just be found there and then we've got the door that closes off to separate the two areas in here we have your booster box so there is a little switch on the top which you can turn on and off but it must that blue light must be on for you to watch the tv and we've got your aerial which you adjust the angle and the direction by releasing the collar and turning the pole around should you need to do that fitted onto the bottom of here is a tv bracket and again you've got sockets just located just there cupboard spacers open the same way so lift it up to open and again we've got lots of storage on this side make sure that they click 
and going down and again on the opposite side we've got storage just all the way along there now both of the beds as you've seen earlier will lift up so just pull up the frame and the gas strut will hold it in place your engine match uh, leisure battery is located underneath this box and there are provisions should you want to fit another one we've also got a couple of isolation valves which in the current position are in the usable position so don't turn them off unless you're told to do so by a professional we've also got your pump which is located underneath here otherwise the rest of it can be utilized as storage and we do have an access door that opens just at the front there push it down it is quite strong push it down when you finish using it and we've got your makeup cushions for that front bed area which I will come on to later in the video and show you how to make up that front area for them occasional visits underneath this one which again is accessible from the outside we've got your carpets your winding poles are just located there for the awning and for the bike rack and that one that I showed you for the fresh water that's all nice and neatly put there. Underneath the two black sort of coated flaps on the floor are, will be your access to your water tanks, both your waste and your fresh. So moving on into the rear of the vehicle, we've got your toilet where we've got the flush with the blue button and the indicator to the left hand side. Now lifting up the toilet, you will see that the blade valve is closed. To operate this, we slide it to the back of the vehicle and it will open it and then slide it back to close it. It's got to be in the closed position to you be, for you to be able to remove the toilet set. Behind the locker here, we have winter vent covers. So I mentioned that earlier in the video, your table, which can be hooked on at the front and the mat for the shower area. We've got towel hooks, coat rails, and additional storage just in there for your belongings here. We've also got storage underneath in the cupboard and we've got the radiator Aldi wet central heating into this area as well so everyone's staying nice and warm. Shower area we've got a little bung that just needs removing when you want to remove the actual or close the actual shower door and as mentioned a couple of shelves light just up there the light switch for in here is just found just down there we have a ventilating roof so this literally just pulls down and then lifts up either front or back and then closes when you're not using it the middle section has in the bedroom area has a blind and a fly screen and that opens in the same position by lifting up the handles in the middle we are we have a hecky so again we have a blind and we have a fly screen and this one then opens slightly differently so you pull this towards you and it opens it up and lock it in place when you're traveling along so cab area we have passenger airbag, glove box, drink holders, an automatic gearbox. We have your air conditioning and your radio. We have the lift up panel for your phones or navigation options. The little button above here is a ratio changer. So you can then press that at slow speeds and it will only work when the engine's in automatic not the manual mode and it will slow the revolutions down to stop your wheel spinning we've got your traction plus which will help you on the icy slippy roads hill descent so it will help you on them uh, steep descents hazard buttons lock buttons and that will lock the door at the habitation and the cab doors your reversing camera mirror steering wheel controls speed limiter and cruise control on this bottom stalk lights and indicators on the top stalk windscreen wipers and screen wash on that one and then on the end of it we have the trip counter we have also got your mode settings and where you change your time and your units on there 
another lock button, electric window switch, and your mirror switches can be found on that side. So, moving the seats and swiveling them, you'll need to pull these little panels in. And then on the front of the seat, there's a bar that you lift up. I spin that around just here, which will slide it forward and backwards. Now on the driver's one, you will just have to make sure that you spin it away from the actual uh, handbrake and they will both spin round so you can look at it just like so. Underneath this seat, we have more additional storage for you. And to make it into a bed, you will also need to lift this up Extend that out. Is your first part. Extend out the section from underneath the forward facing seats and pull to a full extension on that seat. And then it's a case of putting the cushions in the format that I show you in a moment. And then we will put the cushions just like that. So the back and the base. The base, the two cushions together, and then this one has a reinforcement with the single little smaller cushion, which acts as the option for that bed makeup. And then we're back set up for your daytime use. I'll hope you have found the video informative, useful, but most of all, we hope that it brings you Lots of enjoyment on your new adventures. Thank you.